The Oscar-nominated film Hotel Rwanda gave the world a glimpse of the brutality and inhumanity unfolding during the 1994 genocide, often described as the darkest chapter in Rwanda's history. More than 800,000 people, mostly Tutsis and moderate Hutus, were murdered in just three months. The man who inspired the film was the manager of a hotel in Kigali when the killings began. Paura Sabagina became a global human rights icon for sheltering and protecting more than 1,000 people during the massacre. And now he could spend the rest of his life, though, behind bars. Rusa Vagina is an outspoken critic of the Rwandan government. He is currently back in his home country, a place, by the way, that he fled 25 years ago. Now he's facing a slew of terrorism-related charges that he denies. The 67-year-old activist says that he was tricked into boarding a chartered, chartered flight in August that he thought was going to Burundi. Instead, he ended up in a Kigali jail cell in Rwanda. Time now for Zane's Exchange, where we take a look at what's happening with Rusevagina's trial. Right now, he stopped appearing in court in March, saying he does not expect justice. His family calls all of the charges politically motivated. They say their father's health is deteriorating uh, as well. Joining me live now to discuss all of this is Paul Rusevagina's daughter, Karine Kanimba. Karine, thank you so much um, for being with us. So I understand that you are actually able to speak to your father once a week. You're allowed a five minute phone call with him every seven days and it is heavily monitored. He's obviously not able to speak freely to you because he's surrounded by prison guards. What, what can you tell us about what he has said to you? Yes, yeah, so as you uh, clearly you said it, um, the phone calls are only five minutes and they are monitored. We can t sense that he's feeling, he's speaking under pressure, he's speaking under duress. Um, and he also sounds very weak now. He sounds very weak. He sounds tired. Um, he has gone a through a lot since he was kidnapped to Rwanda. And uh, we can tell through, the vo through his voice. Um, we know that his conditions, his current living conditions are awful. I mean, he receives one million a day of just beans and corn and he doesn't receive all his medication he's ha he was held in solitary confinement for more than 260 days in violation of the Nelson Mandela rules which state that you cannot be held in solitary confinement for more than 15 days so um, he is not doing well um, but we pray every day for for him to continue to stay strong Right, because your, your father's 67 years old, he's a cancer survivor, and obviously he needs to be monitored, he needs medication, and as you point out, he's living off of just one meal a day um, of corn and beans and one glass of water. Um, we know that the prosecutors are requesting a life sentence for your father at this point in time. How are you fighting for his freedom? So I uh, requested the life sentence, but um, throughout the duration of the trial, first, my father was not allowed to have his chosen lawyers. He was not allowed to consult the documents, the, the case file against him. He wasn't able to even consult, um, to even have a pen and paper in his cell. They virtually denied him of everything. We've been lobbying the U.S. government, the European Parliament, the Belgian government, and uh, different countries and, and people around the world to help us put pressure on, on Paul Kagame for him to let my father go to release him immediately. Kidnapping my father was a violation of international law. Um, torturing him is another violation of human law, of human rights and human laws, and, uh, and he should be released immediately. Um, obviously, in, in the West, your father is viewed as a hero. A lot of people have watched the movie Hotel Rwanda and have been completely inspired by your father's story. However, the way your father is viewed um, in certain parts of Rwanda is very, very different. Um, some people, including Paul, Paul Kagame himself, including the Rwandan foreign minister that I spoke to, view him as a potential terrorist. I actually spoke to the Rwandan foreign minister about your father, about whether or not he's going to get a, a free trial and about some of the charges that he's facing. Um, and I want you to listen to what the Rwandan foreign minister told me. Our country has a liable judicial system and that the trial will be fair and transparent. It is used to be for other cases. And, uh, uh, we owe justice uh, to Paul Sesabajina, but we owe 
just is also to the victims of terror attacks that were led by Policy Sabajina's armed group in thousand part of our, of our country, uh, and of which he claims responsibility. Policy Sabajina himself has claimed responsibility for terror attacks on uh, the Rwandan territory, so it is not uh, President Kagame or anyone who is uh, just declaring that uh, Sabajina is guilty. He claimed responsibility himself, so uh, the rest belongs to the court. He claimed responsibility himself and the rest belongs to the court. So the Rwandan Minister of Foreign Affairs telling me that your father has claimed responsibilities, terrorist attacks in the northern part of the country because of the support he has for this armed group, the FNL group in Rwanda. Um, what do you say to that? So my father did not claim responsibility for these attacks. As a matter of fact, he asked for an independent investigation into these attacks the moment the Rwandan government started saying that he was responsible. He asked for this independent investigation, and the Rwandan authorities have consistently refused an investigation into these attacks. That is because they know that there is nothing linking these attacks to my father. And um, uh, Minister Biruta referred to a fair trial. As I mentioned, my father has been refused access to his lawyer has been refused access to a case file, was held in solitary confinement. All of these are for over 260 days. All of these are violations of, fair, of, of a fair trial. And the American Bar Association, as well as the Clooney Foundation for Justice, recently released a report highlighting every single one of these uh, fair trial violations and stating that these judges and the verdict of these judges will be um, biased and, and, and false because of, the, of, of all the laws and rights of my father's that have been violated thus far. Um, and another thing I would add is that a minister of foreign affairs who goes on, on national televisions and calls in, uh, a person uh, going on trial, who's on, currently on trial, um, a terrorist, is not correct, is not right, because um, because that means he's also denying him of that fair trial. So this, is, uh, this has been a pattern since the beginning, and the moment he was kidnapped, um, in violation again of international law, without legal extradition, already told us from the not the so first Karine, day that it was. Karine. Karine, you've been working very, very hard to get your father released, to make sure that there is international attention in terms of what's happened to your dad. At this point, though, given the fact that you don't believe that he's going to get a free and fair trial, given what the Rwandan foreign minister said on my show last week, do you believe that your efforts will bear fruit? I believe so, because first, my father is innocent. My father is a humanitarian. He's a human rights activist. And the only thing that he, he's, he spent his past 15 years doing is highlighting and showing to the international community the human rights violations being perpetrated by the, Rwand the Rwandan government. And that is precisely why they want to silence him. Michaela Rong recently released a book called Do Not Disturb that highlights these patterns of extrajudicial killings, uh, kidnappings, and, and, uh, and silencing of Christians critics, journalists, human rights activists like my father. Um, so we will continue. I have hope in humanity and I have hope in justice and that truth will, will come out. And I believe that my father will come home. Karine uh, Klimba, thank you so, so much for being on the program and uh, sharing yours and your father's perspective on this story. Appreciate it.